What's good, everybody? This is your boy, Paul the Fifth, and thank you so much for watching. This is episode one of Production Tips with Paul the Fifth. Before we dive into today's topic, there's something else that I want to talk about. Stay with me, trust me, I promise it's all going to make sense. We, as humans, have two universal languages, right? That would include food and music. And these are two things that I am incredibly passionate about. And as you watch my future videos, you will learn this. As we are in the winter months, one of the first things that comes to mind that fills the heart and warms the soul is a warm, hearty, flavorful chicken noodle soup. You're probably asking, this dude has lost his gore. What are you talking about? Well, I would relay the ingredients in a good chicken noodle soup to ingredients in a good mix. Stay with me, I promise it's all gonna make sense here in a moment. So what are ingredients of a good chicken noodle soup? Your stars are gonna be your chicken, your noodles, you're probably gonna have a good chicken broth, vegetables, and some kind of seasonings. In your mix on this hand, you're probably gonna have some good ingredients as well, a good rhythm section, including drums, bass guitar, piano, acoustic guitar, and vocals. Over here in this mix, the thing that's gonna stand out is your vocal. That is your star. That needs to sit forefront and center in that mix. Over here, with your soup, let's say you're throwing things together with leftover ingredients in your fridge, you've got your chicken, your noodles, some veggies, maybe not enough, some salt and pepper. So we're building that soup over here. We're going to pour in some salt, right? Oh, snap. The lid falls off, too much salt in your soup. What do we do? How does that relate to our mix? Over here in your mix, let's relate that salt to your drums. That salt may be your high end, 10 to 12K. Those cymbals are just too harsh. They're piercing, they hurt the ears. Back to the soup. So we just tried to season our soup up and our lid fell off the salt shaker. So we're trying to add some pepper now, but maybe we're a little afraid. We don't want the lid to fall off on this one too. So we skimp on the pepper. How does that relate to our mix? Let's relate that to your kick drum on the mix. Let's say it's just there, just like. Your kick drum is not maybe punchy enough. It doesn't have enough thud. It's just like, it's just there. It's just like Eeyore. Back to your soup. Let's say you don't have enough veggies. Relating that to your mix, maybe not enough mid-range. Maybe not enough 500 to 1000 hertz. On your soup, if you start a roux, everything is clumpy and just goopy. In your mix, that could relate to being just muddy. That could relate to 500 to 800 hertz. Now, if you don't understand these terms that I'm using, high-end, harshness, muddy, goopy, not enough, punch not enough attack that's okay in the description i'm going to put a link for eq basics as well as eq terminology check that out when you get a chance now for your soup and your mix you want everything to be well blended right you want everything to taste good in your soup you don't want too much salt you don't want too much pepper you don't want lacking vegetables you don't want too many noodles same thing for your mix you don't want your kick drum to stand out you don't want that to overpower your vocals. You want the vocals to sit right up front. You want everything to be well blended. And that's what today's topic and this entire series is about. Today, I'm talking about my top five elements of creating a good mix. No matter where you are in your musical production journey, if you're just starting off, you've got a MacBook Pro and a two-channel interface, or you've been doing this for 15 years, and you've got a full-fledged recording studio with an 80-channel SSL, the number one thing you have got to understand is signal flow. How does that signal come into your station? How is it routed every step in between? And how does it go out? Incoming signal, in between, leaving. Incoming signal, every step of the way, and out. Incoming, outgoing, I, O. Once you understand signal flow, the second most important thing you need to understand is gain staging. What is that? 
I call it the acceptable incoming level of that signal coming into your workstation. In terms of numbers, some recording engineers will say they like to start at negative 12 to 15 dB. Myself personally, I like to start at negative 18 dB. Here's why. If this is your meter and you start right here at negative 12 and this is your top, you only have this much room to work with. If this is your meter and you start at negative 18, you have this much headroom. Headroom is a term for adding things like dynamics, compression, EQ, maybe you're adding effects, reverb, maybe some delay, maybe some slap on there. The lower your signal is to start with, the more room you have to add later on without clipping. In terms of colors, you want that signal to be in the green, maybe just bumping that yellow. You don't want things in the red like tomatoes. No, that's bad. If you want more tips on proper gain staging, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, and go ahead and tap that notification bell so that way you're in the know and you're informed every time I drop a new video. The third thing you need to know as an engineer and producer for your client is a good knowledge of that song. Lots of elements that go with this. You should know the song layout, pre-production, instrumentation. Is this is going to be a singer-songwriter, acoustic guitar and vocals, keys and vocals? Are you going to have full drums, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, keys, mandolin, possibly a theremin, phantom power, condenser mics, dynamic mics, organization, workflow, time, budgets. Are you starting on a Monday and your project needs to be wrapped up by Friday? Oh, is there a holiday in between there? Budgets. Do you have $10,000 to work with? Sounds like a lot, but when you have five people and they all have a day rate of $200, is that all gonna work out? Just things to consider and keep in mind when you're engineering and producing a project. And my fifth element relies all on you. This is where your creativity and experimentation comes in. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is definitely have templates, have things set up, but don't always use your same exact workflow for every same project or else everything's gonna sound exactly the same, right? So maybe try a different plugin, maybe try a different setting, use some different EQs. If you're gonna add some reverb, don't use the same one on everything. Maybe try something on the vocal, maybe something on your piano, two different ones. Make things exciting. exciting. Part of your job as a producer is to use some psychologies get the best performance that you can possibly capture from your artist that you're working for. You want to capture raw emotion. You want to capture power. You want the people that are listening to their music. You want that to pull out their heartstrings, right? You want to know, I recorded that. I did that. I brought this artist's vision to life, right? So if you have an idea and you can grasp these five concepts, you have a great foundation for what it takes to become a recording, mixing, and mastering engineer. As I said, this is a good basis and a good foundation for starting a good mix. And every episode, we're gonna be building upon this. Stay tuned for next week's episode. I have something incredibly exciting. It's what I call my rig run down. My new Mac Mini will be here. I'm putting a new monitor in. I'm gonna show you all the tools that I have accumulated, the setup that I have built that works for me, all my plugin suites, my recording process, the templates that I have, so that that way you can build a foundation, create a process, and a good workflow for yourself as well. Thank you for watching, much love, I appreciate you, and I will see you next week for my, my rig rundown.